Hi, everyone. It's Devon Garden from MEAPR. We're here with Franz Wagner from Michigan. Uh, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. We'll try to take as many questions as we can today. You can send me a message to the chat also. Okay, Franz, with our first question, we're going to go to Alder Almo. Alder, go ahead. Hi, Franz. Thanks for doing this. I'm Alder from Empire Sports Media in New York. I'd like to ask if you ever had a contact with the Knicks or the Nets, and if ever you did, how did it go? Um, um, I just have, but um, no, I, I don't really, that's okay. I don't really uh, want to say who I worked out for and who I didn't, um, if that's okay with you guys, but uh, yeah. So for my second question, how do you see yourself fitting in with, with the type of uh, game the NBA has a role. Um, honestly, I think I've fit in pretty well. Um, I think every team needs big wings that can that can move, that can shoot, um, make decisions with the ball, um, and play defense. And I think um, those are all things where I'm uh, where I'm good at, and things that are important for my game. So, um, yeah, I think the game is getting more and more positionless. So, um, I think I fit in very well with my versatility. Thank you so much and good luck. Thank you. Okay, next question. Let's go to Sean Coleman. Sean, go ahead. Hans, how are you today? Good, how are you? Doing well. Congratulations to this point and best of luck on Thursday to you. Um, you. As a two-way wing, especially when it comes to the ability to facilitate on offense as well as create turnovers on defense, that type of playmaking at your size really seems to be a calling card for you that is unique in this draft class. Do you think that's what separates you more than most? And, and do you think that will easily translate right from the start to the NBA? Yeah, I think, um, like I just touched on, I think versatility is one of the most important things in, in the game, the NBA game today. So, um, yeah, I think I can shoot. I think I can dribble. Uh, I think I can play defense. Uh, I think I can defend um, really well in, in multiple positions. Um, so I think that's going to fit in well. I think I, I know how to read the game too and, um, you know, how to play within a system. So, um, I think that'll help me, um, fit in with whatever team I'm going to play at. Um, but, you know, I also think that I have a lot of room to grow. And I think, um, that combination of maturity in my game and, you know, being able to fit in right away and also, um, being able to improve a lot more, I think, uh, is what makes me unique in this draft. One other quick question. How unique and helpful has it been, of course, in your case, to have an older brother who's been through it and, you know, be there to kind of be a mentor for you? How has that helped through the entire draft process? Um, it's helped, helped a lot. Um, obviously, he's he's very busy, too. But, uh, no, I mean, even the last couple of three years, uh, I've asked him a lot. Um, obviously, I've seen a lot um, when I visited him and stuff. And, um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things you need to know and that are good to know before you get there. But um, I think the most important thing that he's that nothing can really prepare you for, for the NBA lifestyle and the life and, um, you know, the business, the business side around it too. So uh, I'm excited to, to be able to experience it soon. Okay. Before we take our next question, please mute your line unless you're called upon to ask a question. All right. Next question. Let's go to Isaac Simpson. Oh, hey, Franz. Congratulations, first off, first and foremost. Uh, but if, if, kind of piggybacking off the last question, uh, if you had to pinpoint one thing in your game uh, that you'd like to continue to improve upon, what would that be? And there's a rumor around the draft community that you're now 6'11". Is that true? Uh, I think first one, first, first part of the question, I think um, I think I'm going to improve uh, a lot in, on creating my shot and creating for other people when I don't have, to have an advantage yet. Um, I think that's probably the, the most important thing for me going forward. And then also, um, I think showing that I can shoot the ball consistently. Um, I was kind of up and down in college and I shot the ball really well for most part of the season, but um, just didn't for uh, the first and the last couple of games. So uh, I think consistency with my shot and then creating off the dribble, I think those things um, I can improve on. And um, I would say I'm almost 6'11", maybe not quite there yet, but uh, I definitely grew a little bit. Um, this past year. Okay, next question. Let's go to Wes Goldberg. 
Wes, go ahead. Hey there, thanks for uh, doing this. Um, just wanted to know if you had any um, contact, if you had worked out for the Golden State Warriors yet. Like I guess I don't want to, uh, it's kind of my strategy, I guess. Uh, I don't really give away too much. Um, so sorry about that, but um, yeah. If you were to um, then just sort of project, given where you are, probably going to go in this draft, how do you think you would fit in with the Warriors? Um, I'd fit in really well, I think. Um, Obviously, they have they're gonna have two great shooters next year again, and probably the best point guard in the game. So, um, I think what they what they need, I think my versatility um, can can help that team a lot. Um, I think being able to defend uh, multiple positions and also shoot the three well, I think is what's gonna help me stay on the floor or or get on the court. Um, and yeah, I think like I said earlier, I think I can read the game well, and you know play play a free game like I, that that's what I would call it and I think Golden State plays that um very much and a lot and you know they, they just kind of move a lot off the ball and pass the ball a lot and move the ball a lot and move their body so um I think that requires you know high IQ players and players that um uh, play the game well with e with each other and then and I think uh, I can do it really well okay next question let's go to James Ham. Hey, Franz, how are you? Good. How are you, James? Good. Um, we saw some photos of you working out with Harrison Barnes, and I'm just wondering how that went uh, and what that relationship is. Uh, it, was a, it was a great time. Uh, I learned a lot. Um, you know, we're working out in the same gym, so, um, you know, we, we played a little bit against each other, and um, I think for me it was just the coolest. It was really cool for me to see, to see a guy like that it's, who's been in the league for so long and uh, still work so hard and be so diligent and disciplined about everything that he does. And um, I think I learned a lot in, in the couple of weeks that I spent with him. And um, it was definitely a lot of fun competing against him. Okay, next question. Let's go to Brian Barefield. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today, Franz. Uh, how was it playing for a uh, NBA coach, uh, former NBA coach like Jawan Howard, and how prepared did he get you to to take this next step? It was a it was a great time. I think um, I think Jawan uh, is a great was a great resource, and it's still for me, and uh, hopefully for a lot of other players at Michigan too. Um, you know, he's so open about everything. Um, always wants to help, um, is always reaching out, always wants me to ask questions and stuff like that. And I did that a bunch uh, while I was there. Um, I think not a lot of college players have that luxury of, you know, having a good college coach that um, has already been and coached at the level where you want to get to. And obviously he played there for 19 years, I think. So, um, I mean, he, he talked to me a lot about, you know, the pre-draft process and also um, just about the NBA life, but, um, like, like Mo told me, I think um, his main message was that you got to be ready for it, but um, you got to experience it to, to really know what it is. So uh, I'm, I'm happy that I, that I can do that soon. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. Okay, next question. Let's go to Mike Volkanoff. Hey, Franz, how are you? Um, how are you? I just have a question for you. I don't know if you've been watching the NBA playoffs at all uh, in the finals, but if you have – um, what have you noticed that teams are looking for uh, from players at your position uh, to be able to do well, to, to be able to play and compete at you know, the playoffs and finals level? I think two-way players are really important. Um, if you look at Mikel Bridges, Jay Crowder, um, Cam Johnson, I think those three. Um, I think um, to be a good two-way player on the wing, I think obviously you have to defend really well. Um, you saw Mikel Bridges sometimes guard the point guard or uh, most of the times the main players on the other team. Um, and then also shoot the ball well. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of good uh, shot creators and one-on-one -on -one players in the NBA. And then um, to give them more space and, uh, you know, time to operate, I think it's important to have shooting uh, on the wing and on the perimeter. So um, I think those two things is uh, what, made, what made those three uh, at least uh, really well, really good. Thank you. Thanks. Next question. Let's go to Chris Fedor. Hey, Franz, how are you? Good, how are you? 
I'm good. So you mentioned um, growing a little bit over the last year and being close to six foot 11. Have you gotten the impression from teams during this pre-draft process that that changes anything in terms of your evaluation or where they see you fitting in the NBA and how they can play you? Um, no, I think, um, no, I think I showed uh, during the year that I'm very versatile. Um, obviously, I don't know how, how much stronger I get if I, if I grow a little bit more. Um, I'm sure that's, that's going to help me play even more positions, but um, you know, I think I'll show that I can play really well in the perimeter. And um, I think if my body fills out a little bit more, um, you know, I can play more inside too. So, um, yeah, I think I think that that makes sense to to assume that you know, once you get stronger, maybe a little bit taller, you can play more positions too. Thank you, and best of luck. Thank you. Okay, next question. Let's go to Chris Henderson. Chris, you can go ahead. Hello, Franz, and congrats on everything for you now and going forward in your NBA career. So I'm not for sure if you got asked this, but being from Germany, Dirk Nowitzki, obviously, he sort of reigned supreme there. What was his influence to you? And then my follow-up question would be, you're going to be on NBA 2K. Can you talk about that? Um, I mean, Dirk, um, Dirk is like Michael Jordan uh, for, for German kids. Um, you know, he – he made it really like seem possible to, to make it to the NBA, not just make it, but obviously be a Hall of Fame type player. So um, to see him win the championship, I still remember where I was at the time and stuff like that. Like um, obviously that was a huge deal for everybody. And um, I think he made basketball, um, you know, in, in Germany a lot more important and, and relevant. And I think you can see that. I think there's a lot more German players that, that make it to the NBA and make it to top teams in the Euro League. And um, I th I'm, I'm sure you can give him some credit for that. And um, the second part was about 2K. What did you say about that? No, I was asking you, so obviously, you know, more importantly, I guess to have fun, you're going to be on the video game now. You're an actual person. Obviously, you've seen your brother on the video game, but now you have those bragging rights as well. Can you talk about the importance of that, how cool that is for you to actually be on a video game now? No, that's, that's for sure dope. I mean, uh, I think 2K11 was maybe the first game that I played. So, um, no. Every year at Christmas, I would get the new game and, and start playing that night. So um, to know that, you know, this next next 2K, I'm going to be on there and my friends and I'm and myself, I can play with, with myself is, is pretty cool. Um, but, you know, uh, there's still a lot more work to do. And uh, hopefully I'll be on the game in, in 11 years or whatever it is. Um, still on the game. Yeah. Congratulations. I appreciate you. Thank you, Chris. All right, Franz, our next question is going to be from Dwayne Rankin. Dwayne, you can go, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Well, I just wanted to just ask, you just talked about the finals and the Suns and mentioning their, their wing guys. How much you, – you'll be long off the board by the time they draft, so I'm not going to ask you how you would fit in there, but I am going to ask you, what was it like watching that kind of style and how much fun would that kind of style of ball be where the wing guys were so involved on the team? Um, I mean, it was a lot of fun. I thought the, the whole playoffs uh, were very exciting. Um, you know, some upsets, some some teams that you didn't expect uh, make it, Then you know, won some rounds. Um, I thought it was really cool to see. And, um, no, I mean, I feel like that's every year uh, the past couple of years that, you know, wings and long wings and versatile uh, players are more important and get more important, uh, I feel like, by, by every year. So, um I'm lucky that, that I am one of those guys and hopefully I can be in that position one day, but it's definitely a lot of fun to see that. Thank you, sir. Good luck in the draft. Thank you. All right, next question. Let's go from Daniel Bell. Daniel, you can go ahead. Hi, Francis. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. Um, just wanted to know how the draft process has been for you. Um, if you feel like it's any different than any other players, considering you have you had a coach that was in the NBA and you have a brother that's in the NBA, and then how much you're looking forward to the draft this week? Um, I mean, the draft process was definitely unique. Um, I think it's for everybody, it's a little different, but um, I thought I had a good experience. I thought, uh, you know, I improved uh, throughout the whatever it was, two months. And uh, at the end of the day, the, the goal was to, to, to show teams who I am and not just on the court, but also off the court and show what I worked on um, this, you know, before – in May and April, basically. So um, that was really, that was my goal. I thought 
I did everything I could to, to put myself in the best position now for Thursday night. And um, obviously, I'm really excited for for Thursday. Um, it's going to be uh, a hectic day, I'm sure. But, um, you know, hopefully I can have some friends here, some family here. And uh, hopefully we can have a good night. Okay, next question. Let's go to Lynn World. Hey, Franz, uh, Grüße aus Deutschland erstmal. That's <laughs> good. That's good. Yeah. Question will be in English, though. Um, I asked your brother the same question um, during the All-Star Weekend last year in Chicago. Um, quick and simple, if you could choose, would you rather play with Mo or against Mo? <laughs> I would definitely play. I'd uh, rather play with him. I think he's a pain in the ass. Sorry about my <laughs> playing against him. is not fun, I think. He said the same thing, basically. He said, you were, you were too good, so I'd rather play with you. <laughs> okay, next question is going to be from Sean Coleman. Hey, Franz, just wanted to also follow up. Um, you know, obviously, um, Isaiah uh, um, and you know, other teammates such as that are going to be in this draft from Michigan. It seems like a few schools have a few players that are going to be in this draft. Juwan Howard really seems to be creating Michigan into a powerhouse. How does it feel to be a part of a draft class with two other teammates this year in the draft? Um, is it three other teammates? We have Mike, Shondi, and Isaiah. Is that right? Excuse me, excuse me three. I'm sorry. You're good. You're good. Um, I mean, it feels great. I think um, there's something to be said, man. This is his second year now for Juwan, and uh, I think we had a really good year this past year in RC. Uh, he's doing a really good job recruiting, too. Um, no, man, I think um, you got to give him a lot of credit, man. I, I, don't, I, I've, I don't remember seeing this anywhere else before to, to turn a program or to keep, keep a program going, I, I should say, um, in two years the way he did. Um, really impressive. And, um, no, it's definitely cool to be a part of it for sure. Okay, our next question is going to be from Seb Dimitro. Hey, Franz, auch hier Grüße aus Deutschland. Um, question in English. Um, you've already talked about the basketball side, but having a, a brother and a coach that have obviously a lot of NBA experience, what are some things that you foresee that might be different than anything that you've lived through so far from a perspective of off the court stuff? And how do you prepare yourself for all the, I guess, hoopla that comes with uh, making it to the NBA this week? Um, I mean, two things. One, um, I mean, from now on, I mean, in college, People know you on campus and stuff, but, you know, come Thursday night, uh, life's going to change a little bit off the court. More people know you and, um, you know, you're more of a more of a name, I guess. So um, that that part, you definitely got to get used to There's, You know, you got to be careful what you do um, off the court and know that everybody's kind of watching you. And um, then I think another thing is the business side of it. I think in college, kind of you know where you, you know where you're gonna be you're kind of more more of in control but um in the nba anything can happen at any point so um i don't really know how to prepare for it i guess the, the only thing i can do is um to make sure i'm i'm in a good spot mentally and have people that, can, that i can reach out to and uh, ask for support uh, but other than that i think um you just kind of have to experience it and and see how everything goes Uh, just to follow this up real quick, uh, in German, in a few words, uh, can you explain, uh, wie viel besser bist du als dein Bruder und wie sehr freust du dich gegen Moritz zu spielen? Und wo liegt vielleicht auch ein krasser Unterschied zwischen euren beiden Spielstilen? Um, ja, ich glaube, im 1 gegen 1 sah Deutsch natürlich, dass ich ihn schlage. Um, ich glaube, er würde was anderes sagen, aber so soll es ja sein. Um, ich glaube, um, dass wir ganz anders, also nicht ganz anders, aber schon, dass es schon große Unterschiede gibt. Ich glaube, um, I'm college, I was sehr, sehr viel mehr ein, ein Scorer, würde ich sagen, um, ein Go-To-Guy. Um, ich ich glaube, das wollte ich so ein bisschen machen, aber ich glaube, ich habe es noch nicht so richtig hingekriegt, wie er es gemacht hat. Ich glaube, ich war mehr, um, you know, weißt du, jemand, der, der alles so ein bisschen gemacht hat. Ich glaube, ich, glaub, ich habe besser verteidigt als er am College auch. Um, und ich habe das Spiel, Spiel glaube ich, in, in, in anderen Facetten uh, ein bisschen uh, beeinflusst. Um, ja, und ich, ich würde mich riesig freuen, ähm, wenn wir irgendwann mal auf dem gleichen Court stehen und ähm, ja, hoffentlich passiert das nächstes Jahr. Ja, yeah, it's gonna happen. Thanks for your time and uh, good luck, man. Alles Gute. Thank you. Danke. All right, with our final question for today, let's go to Jared Greenberg. Thanks, man. Um, I guess kind of similar to, to that last question, the English question, I guess. <laughs> um, 
in terms of getting yourself ready for 82 games night in and night out, taking on the best competition in the world, what conversations have you had and what have you done physically to make sure you're ready for the grind that's about to come your way over the next eight months? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't, I don't know exactly how it's going to be for me and how I'm going to experience it. Um, but, you know, I think it's very important to, to be healthy, um, be strong, because, um, like you said, the 82, 82 game season is definitely a grind. It's definitely a lot different from college. So um, I think making sure that I'm healthy physically and mentally and um, I think getting myself in, in the same mindset every night um, is going to be important. Also, um, I'm a guy that if, if I stay too focused on one thing the whole time, um, my mind kind of, you know, drifts off. So maybe finding something off the court that I can uh, maybe focus in on when, when I have some time off um, to make sure that I'm, I'm ready for, for game night. But, I mean, how much, how much love of the game does it take to get yourself ready uh, physically? For, for, for this? Um, I mean, I think I love the game as much as anybody else. Um, I think uh, when times are hard and difficult or something is off the court, I think playing basketball always helped me. So um, it's just a matter of, um, you know, obviously there's, there's going to be nights where you're tired or uh, where a lot of stuff is going on, but uh, I'm always going to be excited to play basketball. And um, obviously just next year, I'm going to play against people that I've been looking up to uh, for basically all my life. So, that enough is going to be, I think, um, a lot of motivation and uh, it's going to bring a lot of excitement uh, for myself. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Well, Franz, thanks so much for taking the time to do this today. Uh, we really appreciate it and wish you the best of luck throughout the rest of this process. Thank you. Thank you, guys.